because that challenge is the most watched the moments in TV history. You look at the Super Bowl, uh, shows on networks. I mean, these are millions of people watching. But if you look at some of the most popular videos on YouTube, those videos have millions of views within 10 minutes. Bigger than Amazon Prime Video, bigger than Hulu, bigger than Disney Plus. YouTube is a juggernaut. I mean, it is represents over 20% of time spent on connected television. With more than 500 hours of video uploaded every minute and over 1 billion hours watched every day, Google's YouTube is the world's second largest search engine. And you need to fry an egg. You need to know how to change a tire. You want to do anything. The how-to to comedy to, I mean, it's an endless source of entertainment. When YouTube launched 15 years ago, it revolutionized the way people could create and share video content online. They made it very easy to post and share things. And you also were entering a phase where many of us had cameras in our cell phones for the first time. And its meteoric growth hasn't subsided. Over 2 billion users visit YouTube every month. And for Google's parent company, Alphabet, it represents a significant portion of its business. In 2019, YouTube generated $15 billion in revenue, and it's likely to surpass that this year with $12.89 billion in revenue so far, which is up about 24% from the same time last year. You can become a millionaire almost overnight with a hit video. Your life can change just by hitting upload. It's sort of one of the most powerful forms of content creation on planet Earth. And remember, it has this incredible price called free. And so free with massive content scale, always something new all around the world is incredibly powerful. But this power hasn't come easy. YouTube has faced controversies, lawsuits, and ever-growing competition over the years. The company has gotten you know, so big that they, they can't always keep up with all of the content that gets uploaded. YouTube was founded in 2005 by three former PayPal employees. The original idea for the service was a video online dating site, but difficulty in getting enough uploads led to a pivot. All right, so here we are, one of the uh, elephants. This was the first video ever uploaded to YouTube by co-founder Javed Karim. No one could have predicted in that moment what YouTube would become. There was this basic idea that you would be able to, to host video and to, um, and to share video, but the implications of that are so much more than anyone could have, could have originally imagined. Later that year, on December 15, 2005, YouTube officially launched. At this time, the site was receiving 8 million views a day. What YouTube became known for in those early years was what we would refer to as user-generated content, and that introduced this era of identifying YouTube with viral videos, like the famous Charlie Bit My Finger clip or David After Dentist. Is this real life? Shortly after its launch, people began sharing a Saturday Night Live Lonely Island skit, helping catapult YouTube into the mainstream. Unofficial uploads of the music video received more than 5 million collective views within a few months. However, it set in motion the multi-year struggle the tech company would face with copyright lawsuits. Saturday Night Live and its owner, NBC, confronted YouTube and was saying that it was a violation of copyright and it's something the company hadn't quite been confronted with yet. For YouTube, it was a long road to being seen as, quote unquote, legal and good for the industry. I mean, I think the music industry for a long time, remember, didn't believe in the promotional engine of YouTube. and. You know, now you can't launch a, a song, you know, a stream, anything without being visible on YouTube. By July 2006, YouTube announced the site was receiving more than 100 million views per day. Google also was working on its own video platform, but what was attractive about YouTube was that they had more viewers. Less than a year after its official launch, Google made the biggest purchase in its history thus far. Hi YouTube, this is Chad and Steve, we're the co-founders of the site and we just want to say thank you. Today we have some exciting news for you. We've been acquired by Google. Today Google bought YouTube for 1.65 billion dollars. YouTube's founders are 27 and 29. It is a young person's game. The videos are quick. The fortunes are huge even though they just don't make media empires the way they used to. 
At the time, some questioned the deal, but clearly it worked out. I put YouTube into a category very similar to Instagram. Of, it's not clear how big they ever would have gotten without the power of a larger entity. And so I think Google as a buyer was very important. YouTube has become one of Google's most profitable businesses. Its ad revenues far exceed that of its cloud business, and it continues to hold a top ranking spot in social media usage. YouTube has changed considerably in its 15 years. Early on, people were using it to share funny videos, but it also became a popular place for artists. You could upload yourself singing and be discovered and seen by music agents. I mean, even someone like Justin Bieber, like that was how he got a start, how he got noticed. People who had talents or skills they wanted to share with the world didn't need someone else to buy into their talent in order for it to reach a large audience. In 2007, YouTube introduced the YouTube Partner Program, allowing users to monetize their channels. That gave birth to new careers that didn't exist. Within maybe 10-ish months, I was at income parity with a job I hated versus making videos on phones in my one-bedroom apartment. It was one of the few places, especially at that time, where you could actually earn money by creating something in the digital space um, without needing to set up an entire whole business and, and you know advertising sales department on your own. A lot of early YouTubers have built lucrative careers on the site. If you're a creator, by far the most visible, powerful platform in video to monetize is YouTube. And there are creators that are making millions and millions of dollars every month from the platform. YouTube has done a lot to embrace creators and encourage production on the platform. You want to make a channel about plants? We're going to give you everything you need to be able to distribute that and, and build an audience around that. YouTube's impressive growth only kept accelerating. By May 2010, it was streaming 2 billion views a day. Google brought its strengths to the service, implementing its recommendation and search algorithms. The reason YouTube was so successful, aside from the creators, was sort of the rise of the algorithm. The what made it work is that you could discover content you were interested in, and then the recommendation engine that gave you other things to watch based on what you had seen, that's what made YouTube go vertical. The platform basically both anticipates your needs based on who you subscribe to or the type of stuff that you watch regularly, um, or has gotten better at introducing you to things that it thinks you might like based on what other people are watching. You ended up never leaving, and it really was all about keeping you in the ecosystem, and then obviously no company's better than Google than monetizing time spent. But as other streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Prime Video became popular, YouTube wanted to diversify the type of content on the platform and started creating its own. We've done about 50 YouTube originals. 50? Yes, and in, the last, in the last two years. I'd say the original content hasn't taken off as much as they would have liked. And while it's still early, you definitely don't see the same amount of viewers you would see on, say, like a Netflix original. They were dabbling in content in that world of Netflix and Amazon and Disney Plus, et cetera, being a relatively small player in content, I think is a very hard place to be. And so I don't think it's surprising at all that that effort has been increasingly just scaled back and scaled back with the focus really being on user-generated content. It also started rolling out paid subscriptions, YouTube Red, now YouTube Premium, YouTube Music, and YouTube TV. YouTube now has over 30 million music and premium paid subscribers. YouTube premium that basically offers users ad free YouTube content, YouTube TV, which is supposed to be the company's answer to cable cutters. YouTube TV, however, has been slower to catch on. YouTube TV now has more than 3 million paid subscribers. The idea of paying a subscription for YouTube is challenging for a lot of consumers. And oh, these are nice incremental businesses like YouTube TV and YouTube music but they're relatively small compared to what we're talking about in terms of the scale of the user-generated uh, ad-supported content that is the core of YouTube. One of YouTube's biggest categories has been in music. Almost all the most viewed videos on YouTube are music videos. Even from the early years, YouTube was a place where people could engage in the experience of music. Coachella's live streaming and they partnered with YouTube. And so people were on YouTube who couldn't go to the festival themselves from around the world they were viewing. YouTube has expanded the functionality of its player to make ads interactive, even allowing links directly to products where a customer can make a purchase. The holy grail of advertising for any brand, right, is 
to actually be able to move a car off of a lot to move a product off a shelf. Now it's literally just click a button and buy. And that product can be sitting at your door in two days. Live streams are quickly growing as well, a feature unique to YouTube compared to other streaming giants. Kids content is another popular category on the platform. Channels for kids are some of the most watched, with tens of millions of subscribers. In 2015, YouTube launched a dedicated YouTube Kids app just for children's videos. As these platforms grow at massive scale, it's becoming increasingly challenging to manage the content being uploaded. YouTube, like any social platform, uh, has creators who are uploading questionable content. Early on, YouTube faced a litany of lawsuits around copyright infringement. One of the most prominent cases was a multi-year, $1 billion suit by Viacom. The companies eventually settled, paving the way for media companies and YouTube to work together. In the early days of YouTube, it was, it was a haven for like copyright materials. I mean, you saw there were movies, TV shows, anything was sort of up there. And then uh, movie studios and uh, music studios came after creators. But ultimately, you saw them start to realize that this was a viable platform. And there was almost kind of an unholy peace that was struck. One of the important things that happened over the life cycle of YouTube was the introduction of what we call content ID, but it's basically uh, a backend technology that allows us to, allows rights holders to track and understand what content um, is being posted of theirs online. Content moderation has been another one of YouTube's biggest hurdles. Which posts to remove and which ones to keep has proven to be quite the challenge. You've, you've seen the rise of conspiracy theory videos and hate-filled videos, and YouTube has tried to respond quickly to those. They made a number of policy changes in 2019 that included banning certain videos that would pronounce any one group superior to another, but these policy changes came after horrible backlash. Recently, the debate around repealing Section 230 has intensified, a statute that protects social networks from the content users post. It's time to come up with a new legal structure that doesn't necessarily strip away some of the be all, all of the benefits of Section 230, but replaces it with something that's more appropriate for where we are now. Are you acting as the purveyor of truth? Are you a media company or are you a technology platform? And to this point, the company is largely tried to defend itself saying that it is just a technology platform. Misinformation has been another hurdle for YouTube. Increasingly, people are turning to platforms like YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter for news, and content there isn't always accurate. They've moved pretty swiftly on some of the um, false medical claims, immediately put up policies that would ban false medical claims on YouTube. But famously, they still weren't able to catch some false information from going viral like Plandemic, which had a lot of false information about the COVID-19 virus. And it says that it's preparing policies for the COVID-19 vaccine. So it's already preparing to, you know, remove misinformation that goes against expertise. As YouTube has attempted to keep inappropriate content off its site, challenges have emerged with those who review graphic videos that aren't caught by its AI. The hope from all of these social network companies is that they can rely on this technology to do the jobs that you know humans don't want to do, ideally. But the companies even still haven't been able to do that yet. YouTube is dealing with lawsuits from contractors who are exposed to disturbing content. Facebook is also dealing with similar lawsuits. Just in training alone, uh, they were subjected to a lot of violent videos. At the end of the day, we're an information company. Um, we have the access to Google, some of the algorithms there. Um, we have the resources to deploy. Um, we've committed to having, last year we committed to having over 10,000 people who are working on controversial content. Anybody who uploads a video is at the, the mercy and service of, of YouTube. You know, they have the right to terminate channels as they see fit, to suspend channels uh, as they see fit. And I think we've seen YouTube respond very quickly in a lot of ways to some of these controversies. And I think more quickly than any other social platforms out there. On top of the controversies and lawsuits, YouTube faces ever-growing competition. Social media giants like Facebook, TikTok, and Snap, as well as streamers like Netflix, Amazon, and Disney Plus are all vying for people's attention. YouTube has a clear advantage to its competitors on mobile, where it dominates 70% of the total time spent watching the top five entertainment apps. 
you think about all the money that gets spent on, whether it's Netflix or Disney Plus and how many billions of dollars are spent to create that content, they don't spend anything at YouTube to create all of this content. Their biggest challenge is just keeping the servers and making the interface and discovery as good as possible. YouTube isn't so much trying to compete in the premium content category, which Netflix, Disney, and HBO own. This is who YouTube is. YouTube means free content. It doesn't mean premium paid for content. That's Netflix's world. That's Amazon Prime's world. YouTube potentially faces its greatest threat from TikTok, an app that has taken the world by storm and is featuring short form content not all that different from what was seen in YouTube's early days. If you think about what TikTok is today, it's music, sort of karaoke, comedy, dance, performance. A lot of the things that you saw early on when you think about YouTube, this is really the first thing I've seen that even has a shot at replicating the YouTube model. Nothing else is even close. YouTube has rolled out Shorts, a short form video app with features similar to TikTok. Shorts is basically part of a, a larger effort to just simply um, make it easier for people to engage with the kind of content they're interested in in a way that makes sense for them and it makes sense for the content. But YouTube does have a strong position in the market that will be challenging to dethrone. The beauty of YouTube is that it has scale that nobody else has, like the actual size of its revenues and what it can offer in terms of the brands and visibility for any type of content creator is unparalleled. Nobody can do today what YouTube can do. You don't win by looking backwards and looking around. You win by looking forward and looking at your customers and figuring out what do they want? How can I be better at what we do? So by giving people A, a platform to share their opinions and B, paying them for it, YouTube is really well positioned for the future.